I'm Marty Nemco, and this is the first of my reinventions. I want to reinvent the way in which we look at climate change. To change things from, we look at it with almost religious zeal, to an approach that is more of dispassionate agnosticism. And here is why. The science is not yet clear enough to justify the enormous costs and the severe restrictions of our freedom. For example, the gridlock that we're ever more going to be forced to sit in because environmentalists have blocked freeway building. And then there are the opportunity costs. What the money and effort could otherwise have been devoted to, for example, figuring out how to cure cancer or improve education. But you might ask, how can you say to scientists who are justifying major major efforts to cool the globe are, are wrong? After all, the United Nations International Panel on Climate Change consists of 1,200 scientists, and they say we need to spend big. The fact is, of the 1,200 scientists, only a few had the power to write that report, to have input into the report that was significant. And those few are not a politically unbiased group. They are ideologically predisposed to rather extremist views on conservation. When one looks dispassionately, at the data on climate change, and I'm not talking about my opinion, I'm going to mention some very eminent scientists in a moment. It's clear that more data, better data are needed before that, to, before that justifying that cost. Why? Because all of the following five things must be true in order for us to justify the cost. Number one, climate change must actually be occurring. It's not 100% certainty that it is more worrisome or more significant, there is even greater doubt that the climate change is significantly man-made. There's also significant doubt that the climate change is a net negative. In fact, global warming is going to make much of the world's cold climates uh, more livable and more arable. There must be certainty that the plan that scientists have concocted to cool the planet must actually work. That's certainly not 100% certainty, far from it. And there must be substantial worldwide compliance with the greatly increased costs and the severe incursions of human freedom for the 50 to 100 years that it'll take for technology to advance enough to make such costs unnecessary. All five of those things need to be true. The joint probability of all of those things occurring is very small. And that assumes additionally that the computer prediction models are valid. And and now I get to mention the scientists. The, uh, no less than eminent scientists, including Richard Lindzen, the, a, who holds a named professorship in atmospheric sciences at MIT, Willie Soon, who's a, an astrophysicist, astrophysicist at Harvard, and Freeman Dyson, who is certainly one of the most eminent physicists living on the planet, and a lot of other very credible but less famous scientists have grave doubts about the validity of the computer models and the predictions and certainly the wisdom of spending big to try to cool the planet. Now, certainly, there are certain efforts that our environmentalists would embrace that certainly should be done, no question. For example, most notably, uh, raising the average gas mileage standards of cars, trucks, etc. Why? Because that has minimal incursions on people's freedom. They can still go where they want. In fact, it saves money because it takes less money to build a less powerful car uh, or truck, and you don't need to go 120 miles an, an hour. And the cost of gas, of course, is less, and it reduces the carbon footprint, and it increases our energy independence. Clearly, we should do interventions like that, compact fluorescence. There's no, no issue there. But there, before making the major efforts, like building no freeways, like forcing all buildings to be green and therefore more expensive for, the, every, for everyone to buy housing, etc., the reinvention I ask for is that scientists and the media, and indeed all of us, to recognize that there are responsible narratives other than the world is doomed unless we spend with virtually without limits in an attempt to cool the planet. We need to replace the censorship of the dissenting view I've outlined here with a careful consideration, a fair-minded consideration of that view. It is time for research and for debate, 
not yet for massive spending. There are just too many surer ways to spend money and effort to improve humankind, like immunizing children in developing countries, providing more funding for research on how to prevent sudden heart attack, and yes, improving the quality of education, which is so often touted as the magic pill, but it has yet not come close to living up to that potential. Uh, and that's my first reinvention. Uh, I'm Marty Nemco. Thanks very much for watching.